If someone told you to stop right now and never work another day in your life, what would you do? My name is Carmen. And my name is Darius. And the first thing I would do is think about the time that I would get back from maybe not working as much as I am now. Because what I would be able to do is I would be able to have more time with my family, time with friends, and even time with myself to really understand exactly some of the things that I want to accomplish in my life for me personally. Yeah. So in this video, we actually want to help you get your time back. <laughs> so we have several steps that we want to share with you so that you can get on the right path to start understanding how you can stop trading that time for money and start living the life of your dreams and creating that ownership that we talk about all the time on this channel. Right now. Now, it's not going to be as dramatic as you're going to be able to do it tomorrow. It's something that's <laughs> going to happen gradually over time. But there's a few steps that we need to take so that this transition can start to happen in our lives because it's, it's kind of like compound interest where you start off in the beginning where it's not much change. But what happens is that change starts to compound from the decisions that you make every single day up until that point. That's a good point. Very good point. So let's jump into point number one, which is efficiency. So when we think about efficiency, all we want you to understand is the concept of how can you be more efficient with your money? Because right now we know far too many people who, for example, are making six figures a year, right? And that was, that, was, that was us, right? So we were making six figures a year and we had nothing to show for ourselves come 365 days later. Can anyone else relate? <laughs> Where you make all this money and then you look at the end of the year and there is nothing left in your bank accounts. And you're going, what happened? And then on top of that, you have some debt or you, you, know, you have some IOUs out there. So it's like, okay, we are obviously not being efficient with our funds. So then how can we start uh, making ourselves aware of our financial health and understanding where our spending is going? Mm -hmm. So point number one right now, we want you to go look at your numbers, <laughs> go figure out how can you be more efficient with your funds and be real with yourself, right? We're not saying for you to skimp. We're not saying for you to withhold or, 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 or keep you from doing anything. We just want you to be aware of what's going on so that you can start making changes should you need to right now as an example for us that that was exactly us that was us we were we earned six figures every single year for a few years and we didn't have anything to show after the fact as a matter of fact we didn't realize how much money we earned until we looked at our, our w-2s or our taxes at the end of the year and we're looking at our taxes for the amount of money that we earned, and we're like nah <laughs> we ain't earn as much because we look in our bank account and it's, it's not a reflection of that. Yeah, there's a disconnect. There, there's a disconnect. But now fast forward to now, what we see at the end of the year in our savings account is about $22,756. That's after taxes without any bonuses. Now, the reason why that's the case is because we started off small with five percent that we started to put aside every single time that we got paid. Every time we got paid from our from our check, we put aside five percent. And then what we started to do is since we started to prioritize paying ourselves that 5%, we started finding more money or more inefficiencies in the way we were spending our money. Yeah. So from that 5%, we started to build to seven. We started building to nine, then 11. And now we're at 30% of our income that we are able to put aside. Now, this isn't the end for us. We want to get to a point to where we, we live off of 50% of our income less, and the rest yeah. of it mm -hmm. that we're we're putting aside because when you think about it when you have your money working for you you don't need as much money as you think you do because that money is always working in the place of you mm -hmm. and i think it's a good perspective to just think about what does life look like when you're no longer working for the income that you have. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, we had this huge wake up call when Darius was laid off. And so when he was laid off, that made us recognize, wait a second, our income is never guaranteed and we have to be in more control of this thing called income. How can we be more in control of the income that we receive and how can we uh, um, transition it and leverage it to make it work for us instead of us working for the funds? So that's why when we're talking about efficiency, it's just about awareness. What's going on in your household? How much money are, are you bringing in? How much are you dependent on? And how can you maybe reverse the role so you're not so dependent on specific sources of income? So then transitioning to what Darius was then talking about is living off of less than what you earn. That's the second point of just understanding, okay, now I'm aware. 
how can I start uh, being more efficient with my funds and living on less than I earn? Because all we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, is create a space for those funds that you're no longer dependent on living on to make those mon- make those uh, funds work for you. And, and we'll get to that point soon. So that the main thing again is again, your, your, your financial awareness. What are you doing? What's happening and how can you be better? And you are the only person that's going to be able to determine this information. It's not about uh, seeking outside help or whatever it is. Like I said, you have to determine what's happening with your household and then build upon it. Right. Because how many times have you gotten paid and then you look back two weeks ago and you don't remember some of the stuff that you bought to re- result in you not having any money for this pay period? Whew. Yep. But but where you can see those inefficiencies is you can look at your bank statement. And then what you can do is the next two weeks or the next pay period, you can work on not buying those things that you don't even remember you bought in the first place. <laughs> and it's easy to do these days with the digital spending. You just two, two taps and, you know, you, you bought something. Right. So th- those are things that you need to be very, very aware of. So the next point that we want to jump into, which is the point number three, is these days you need to be aware of where you're housing your money Mm -hmm. because especially with what we're going on with inflation it's just important for you to recognize that your money has to be in an environment where it's making money no longer are the days where we can just keep our money in savings accounts and cds and hope for the best our money has to constantly be in motion and making money for us so that our future selves will thank ourselves right now let's drill down a little bit more on that because with inflation what that that's helping us realize is the fact that money isn't what we need to be focused on Mm -hmm. money is a result money itself is just a fiat which means it 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 has a value of nothing so what we should be trading our money for should be things that are of value so that in the event that let's say we change currencies as an example the assets that we have to our name will be able to trade for any type of currency that exists Mm -hmm. right so the fact that Congress or whoever's printing uh, dollars and the value of a dollar is going down because of inflation is because we don't need to be in a position to where we're holding on to money. We need to be exchanging that, that money for assets that are of value. And when we talk about assets, we may just as a spitball in stocks, gold, commodities, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the, the one thing that we say, for, at least for us, where we tend to store our money before we invest it is in a whole life insurance policy that's designed for maximum cash value. Now, uh, if you wanna learn more about that, then definitely click on the link below. We'd love to serve you at The Wealth Nation so you can understand how to utilize other storage facilities that will allow you to leverage your funds to help you make money. Now, remember, we said storage facility, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. We park our capital inside a whole life insurance policy, and then we then use the capital inside our policy to invest because we want to be in multiple places at once, earning uh, interest. Right. And and just a simple answer is the money that we store in the banks, they don't have access to all of the money that's actually in the banks or that they say that they have on hand is not actually there so what we want to do is we want to put our money someplace where the money is actually there so in the event that we do need it or if everybody decides to go and get their money at the same time or or whatever situation happens that money is there we can't say the same thing for the bank right <laughs> nope. so what we what we did is we transfer some of our our finances out of the bank because remember we're we're saving 30 percent of our income and we want to get to a point to where we're saving 50 percent So the only way we can do that is we have to not have our money sitting in the bank because for one, our savings account can't even keep up with inflation. So if we transition our money into uh, dividend paying whole life insurance, at least we're in a position to where that money can continue uh, earning a guaranteed interest rate that is much higher than what we'll earn for sitting in the bank. 
Yeah. Now, now one thing I want to do is I want to preface is I want to make sure that uh, I didn't mislead anyone and say that like we're using a whole life insurance policy as a bank account. That's not no. the case, like Darius said. So so we're not going to like a teller and, 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 and getting money like we would at the bank. We're simply just storing our saved funds inside our whole life insurance policy so that we can leverage it for investing. We are still using a bank from traditional standpoints for, for withdrawing and deposits, but we're more strategic with what we're doing with our savings savings and we're increasing the amount of money that we put in whole life insurance because of the amount of money that we're saving. Right. So I just want to make sure that we're on the same page there. And and these again are the tangible steps that we personally are taking so that we never have to work another day in our lives. And the the whole point for us is to get to the 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 nirvana zone so to speak where our money is working for us. We have a few more steps left, right? We're not done. Um, but these are the steps that we've taken. So up to step number 3 like we said, we're, we're, we looked at our efficiencies, we're living on less than we earn, and we're already having a significant amount of money that's going directly to our whole life insurance policies. The next point is investing which is where we already are as well. We're then utilizing the cash that's growing inside of our whole life insurance policies to invest. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because when we borrow or when we leverage the money from our whole life insurance policies, the cash value, we're still earning interest inside of our life insurance policy. So we're then using those funds that we borrowed, which we're still earning interest from, and we're using it to invest at a higher interest rate. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the, the nuances, like I said, as far as how we make this work with whole life insurance. So mm -hmm. again, if you want to understand those nitty gritty nuances that we're not going to cover right now in this video, click on the link below because we have a ton of information we can share with you on how this works. <laughs> right. We're just showing you how we transition from us physically working for money from uh, to having our money work for us or our investments work for us. Yeah. So we take the cash from our policies and we turn it into assets that isn't money, like real estate, stock gold commodities things of that nature these aren't these things aren't uh physical dollars yeah they're, they're things assets. that appreciate. They're things that appreciate. Assets mm -hmm. appreciate. Mm -hmm. And it's important to note too, because the other part of this journey is when Darius and I started investing, we were really heavy handed in real estate because that's what we know. That's what we like. And what we recognized was we weren't diversifying our assets. So what happens a lot of times is I know you all have heard you need to diversify your portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. what, what essentially that means or what it should mean is that you don't want all of your eggs in one asset class <laughs> <laughs> all right you don't want all of your eggs in one asset class meaning for those people who are just uh, heavy into the market mm -hmm. you don't want all of your eggs in the market we got to spread it around so we got to hit we got to hit um equity which is the market we got to hit real estate we got to hit cash flow um, we have to hit commodities you need to be fixed income you need to be well versed in several asset classes because if one asset class goes down the other may appreciate and vice versa so that you don't have uh, you're not dependent again on just one asset class. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are currently right now is diversifying where we are investing our funds. Cause like I said earlier, we were a majority in real estate. So now we're looking into other means of investing so that we can make sure that we're diverse on different levels. Right now, this is where the compound effect starts to happen. And because as we invest and as the uh, value of a dollar goes up, the cost of these different assets uh, that well, when the value of a dollar goes down, the cost of purchasing these assets go up. Oh, yeah. So when that's the case, you naturally have more money just be just as a benefit from what's going on. Now, what also happens is for those of us who are a little slow to getting on the bus <laughs> or a little um, hesitant to, to start this process, it's harder and harder for you to start to get involved because you're getting left behind because you're still stuck with those dollars that are depreciating. Don't get stuck with the potato. You know the, the game hot potato? Yeah. Where whoever gets stuck with it, they're, they're out? Yeah, yeah. That's what money is. Money is like hot potato. So what you want to do is transition those that potato into an asset. Mm -hmm. So that as inflation continues to, to eat the dollar, naturally 
all the assets, the commodities, stocks, the fixed incomes, all that stuff starts to go up in value. That, that's a nice illustration that you say because the, the hot potato could also be just money in your, in your bank account, in your mm-hmm. savings account, and you never want to be stuck with that because that's a liability. Your money isn't moving for you. Right. So it's all about, again, understanding your efficiencies, your inefficiencies, and also letting the ego go because a lot of this too, we had to check our ego because it was nice to see the money in the, in the bank, but that's not nice anymore these days when you realize that your money is literally not earning any money just sitting in the bank. Right. right. So with with that being said, the whole transition of investing is making your money work for you and replacing the fact that you are now working for your income. Right. And that's, I would say, is a huge mindset shift because these are things that I would say, for for me, speaking for myself, I wasn't necessarily taught this throughout my education. Mm -hmm. I have a master's degree and I don't remember a lot of this information being like drilled in me maybe in our basic finance classes but this wasn't a part of my hey in order to succeed in life this is what you have to do plan and i know a lot of uh, people actually comment on our videos as well just saying like i wish i knew this information Mm -hmm. so that's why we wanted to make it simple for you to follow these steps and understand that you don't have to continue working for the rest of your life you just have to have a plan in order to fire your current employer Right. And it, the fact of the matter is, is you can't, you can't afford to work for the rest of your life. You have to start making your money work for you. That's the only way you'll be able to keep up because when Ugh. you trade time for money, the only thing they can give you for the time that you spend is money. And it's, and, a, and it's a percentage of your worth. And it's a percentage of your worth on yeah. top of the fact that they're giving you something that's a liability. Every dollar that you have is a liability because it's losing value. Wait, hold on, hold on. Whew. Okay. That is very profound because I, <laughs> no, no, it is though. We've, we've never had like that conversation. I, and I don't know if you realize what you just said. You said every time money is given to you, it's a liability. Yeah. And when but you- like we, we know that, but we haven't had this conversation of that. Like, like literally every time you get a deposit, you should be trying to figure out how to get rid of it in the sense of. I need to get this burden off of me and it needs to start making money. Right. Like, oh, Darius, that is so good. Every time you get a deposit, it's a liability. Like if you can change your mindset and understand that from just the basic concept of like, I have a sense of urgency to now flip this money because it's a liability. Right. And it did for us. That was good for us today for when we need to flip this money is December 31st for every, as much as we can for every dollar that we save, we need to transition that dollar before December 31st, mm-hmm. because that's when the next tax season mm-hmm. is going to start. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, taxes is the biggest eroder of wealth, not only inflation killing us but then we have to worry about taxes also Mm -hmm. so by us being able to transition our dollars into assets we put ourselves in a better tax bracket Mm -hmm. because we don't have to uh, really worry about that income but by us having a business we also open up more um, tax efficiencies for us as w2 there's only a handful of tax incentives that we have and those start to go away the the longer that we work yeah so what we want to do is we want to put ourselves um in a uh tax free position yeah. which is possible mm-hmm. but you have to start doing the research and you have to start educating yourself on some of this this language so that when the opportunity comes up you're able to ask for these things specifically Whew, i'm still i'm still just buzzing off of like your deposits are a liability um so so when you talk about that this tax-free piece of things we didn't talk about that with the whole life insurance policy right mm-hmm. the the other important so that there's so many different amazing things that are a part of this whole life insurance policy but another uh, piece of this is the tax deferred growth inside the policy so these are little cheat codes that we've been learning along the way with people who have money and where they store their own cash flow. Mm-hmm. So with the investing piece, like I said, that's where we are. We're, we're investing heavily. We're, we're, we're making our money work for us. And the end goal is the last point, which is where we're living off a percentage of our investments. Do you want to tackle that? Yeah, because see, here's the thing when it comes to uh, the fact that you're money making money is that's when you're able to tap into compounding mm-hmm. because that money that you earn since you don't need all of it all at once you can use those funds to invest back into whatever you're investing in Mm -hmm. 
that's where it's, it's really important for us to understand that we need to live off less than what we earn. So instead of us being at 50 percent, we can only we can live off of five percent of our income and still have enough money to maintain our current way of living without having to change anything. Five percent. But that's only when our money is out making money for us, when our assets have um, a return on it and we don't need all of those funds all at once. We put it back into our investment so that we can earn more money. And what naturally happens is that's how the wealth gap continues to get larger and larger. Mm -hmm. And the middle class is being wiped out because the middle class, some of some of us aren't taking advantage of to, of some of those different perks that we do have. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing about money and making money is the fact that the more money you have, the more uh, doors open up for you to make even more money, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is which is crazy. Yeah, it's like the the secret doors when you're playing like Mario Kart, right? <laughs> or you know whatever it is. But the the thing that I would say with this whole process is once you get a handle on this and once you have the mindset shift of recognizing that you no longer need to have a nest egg and actually a nest egg is is no longer valid a nest egg is no longer um, efficient because you can't go like you said you can't afford to do that anymore right. one physically nor financially can you afford to do that where you work uh, until you're 60 years old and then you live off of this pile of money when you live off this pile of money taxes eroding it uh, inflation is eroding it and next thing you know you don't have enough money to sustain your quote-unquote retirement so that's why we have to get this information right now and understand that every single dollar that we're saving we need to be as efficient with it as possible so we can turn it over to now turn this liability into an asset every single dollar has a job like we say and and that job is to turn it from a liability to an asset. So that is your name of the game. That is your goal. And you have to figure that out because that's going to be the difference between you continuing to work for the rest of your life and you not having to work for the rest of your life. Right. And if we continue on this on this journey, when we say work for the rest of your life, you literally are going to work for the rest of your life until your physical body is no longer here. <laughs> So the retire at 65, you can't depend on Social Security because the government is already uh, 11 or 30 trillion dollars in debt. How are they going to afford some of the other things? The only thing they, they can do is increase taxes. And when we talk about increasing taxes, taxes are going to increase on the people that are paying the most taxes, which are the middle class and, uh, and lower. Yeah. The people that have money have their uh, funds and assets that can't be taxed because they're not receiving any money yeah it's it's a world not a whirlwind it, it's a doozy it is <laughs> when you start to understand the ins and outs of how this money game is played not only just from a class system from from, from a uh a strategic system and just even when you just look at the government like darius was saying with, with how much debt that we have as a, as a society we now have to really understand what options are for us and how can we know what those options are to make it work for our current circumstance and and there's steps to this whole process that's why we wanted to give you these steps so that you have the information to know how to move forward because in order for this to happen successfully you can't skip steps right Right. We, we, we can't skip the step of efficiency because you have to understand your income. You have to have a handle on that, because if you don't have a handle on that, once you start investing, you can break this system very easily if you don't have the discipline and the fortitude to make sure that you can can keep a cap on your spending so that your your it's not affecting your investments because you can't touch the principal. <laughs> you, you know, when you go to invest, you shouldn't be touching the principal. You should only be working uh, with the interest, the money that's being made and then only a percentage of the interest exactly so so that's where we find a lot of times people run into issues where this process doesn't work as well for them because they're tapping into the principal and that's not where this whole wealth creation lies right now Carmen and I we're in our 30s now there's some of you that may be a little more seasoned than, than us and you're wondering well I don't have that much time well you may not have as much time as you think you do but you don't have a choice but to get started yes. with where you are right now so yeah. the the pity party isn't 
uh, isn't good for us because what that does is that uh, keeps us from making moves, that keeps us from taking action. And the inaction that we've taken up to this point is what led led you or led us to the point where we are right now. So that's one thing that we need to cut right now so that we can move forward. And I think it's also a good perspective too, is like, what is the rate of return of the stress that you're bringing yourself by staying in your pity party? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we can learn from it, move on and start investing. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but but it, it is a good point because when you look at your age, a lot of people can get dis discouraged and go, I don't have that much time. But what we need to understand, and, and, I, and I feel like this is a huge nugget for a lot of people to take, is understand what wealth means to you right? Wealth may not mean a million, three million, ten million dollars for you. Wealth may just mean having an extra thousand dollars at the end of the month, mm -hmm. right? What would an extra thousand dollars do for you that you didn't have to work for every single month? Like, like think about it in those terms. What, like, and that's why we keep saying you have to do everything on your own scale because wealth means something different to every single viewer that that's on our wealth nation journey. So you have to be in touch with what does wealth mean for you? Because it could mean a few hundred dollars extra a month. It could mean a few thousand dollars or tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it is. And then you just start working incrementally towards those goals. Mm -hmm. So don't let the steps that we're sharing overwhelm you. It's just about getting started. It's about getting traction and repeatable actions that you can continue to do over time to get you a result. Mm -hmm. So never, never let this overwhelm you. Just learn from the information and go, okay, this is what I need to do. I'm pointing myself in the right direction and then get in touch with what does financial freedom mean to you? Right now, the first step is again, getting to a point where you live off less than what you earn. And that goes back to how you manage your money. Mm -hmm. And if you want to understand how we manage our money, then check out this next video where we talk about that exact thing. And don't forget to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.